All right, before I start explaining what's going on in the video, I need to do a quick rant. The closest modern bronze to what would have been used for armor in Roman times is 521 phosphor bronze. 521 bronze is not common. There is one source to buy sheets on the internet. These sheets come in one size. That size is too small. So I reached out to several distributors asking if they can get me bigger sections. Every interaction went about like this. Global Value Added Solutions Corporation, what service do you require? Hey, I was wondering if I could get a sheet of 521, maybe 2x2 two two or 2x4 two feet. Please hold. Perhaps we can make a deal. I can get you this item, if you purchase 500 of them. Yeah, I can't really use or afford 500. Then you are of no use to us, peasant. Come back when you are a corporation as well. Oh, okay. Good. Now if you will kindly stay on the line, there will be a brief sir. Not even the supplier that I used would do it. Like, I know you people get it in larger sheets, just cut it fewer times, goddammit, that's even less work than telling me no. Most people just use brass as a substitute, but the Romans only really started using it in the first century BC. Plus the color is substantially different, and we can't have that. Anyway, I welded the smaller sheets together with no filler. It's about a millimeter thick, enough that I could grind away the seam without weakening it too much. Next, I sanded the whole thing to obscure my grinding marks and get a uniform-ish texture. Finally, I took a couple hours to beat every inch of it with a hammer. If there's one thing I hate about amateur reproductions, it's when people leave the factory mill finish on sheet metal. This also work hardens the bronze and would make it more effective armor. That took way too fucking long. I should explain exactly what I'm trying to achieve here. I rather arbitrarily picked 200 BC as my reference date because it's close to the time period of the sword I made, it lands squarely in the Second Punic War, and I like round numbers. This is for me, obviously, and at 25 years old I would likely be a Hestatus in the Manipular Legions. Of course, rank was a function of both age and bravery in battle, so as a pacifist little bitch I might be lower, but this is all for pretend anyway. That was way more difficult than I was hoping. Now there is actually zero visual or archaeological evidence for the armor of the Hestati at this time. Not a lot of information means I'll be using a lot of this. I did draw the general form from a relief sculpture of gladiators from the Augustan age. It's about two centuries after my time period, but that's the only Roman depiction I could find of a squarish breastplate. The provocateur gladiators were supposed to represent legionaries, so maybe the armor shown represents a typical archaic form that the Romans would have recognized. Oh man. We'll be doing this for a while too. This sucks. Let's cut to it being done. The only description comes from Polybius, a Greek historian writing right about this time. He says it was a simple plate of bronze, a span square, placed over the heart or chest, depending on the translation. Here a span means the width of a splayed hand.
So what I like to do when speculating about these things is come up with a plausible story to go with it. In this period, soldiers paid for their own equipment. They could get it used or new. Hannibal's army was busy slaughtering hordes of Romans and taking their stuff, so there were probably not a lot of retired soldiers around selling their armor. Italy was under constant strain to replace the soldiers and equipment, so quality would have taken a back seat. Now, if I was entering service to fight Hannibal and I couldn't afford chainmail, I'd go to an armorer and say, make me a breastplate with as much metal as my money will buy and don't fuck around making it nice and smooth. Whatever Polybius says about the other soldiers, a span is not very much protection, and I'd feel better with my heart and lungs covered. Those are the important organs anyway, right? If I spill my guts a little, I can stuff them back, and what are the odds I get stabbed in both of my kidneys? It'll be fine, is what I'd tell myself. I got this bronze tube a while back to try out as a guitar slide, but it was way too heavy and soft even if I was any good at guitar. It's reasonably similar to casting alloys the Romans used with a high lead content. As long as you don't lick the dust or anything, it can't be worse than all the water I drank going to college in Flint, Michigan. Since the armor itself is pretty simple, I put some extra effort into the fasteners. I've seen similar systems on earlier examples, so I'm calling it legal. I imagine making these little ring sets would have been an apprentice job and wouldn't add hugely to the overall cost. These would have been cast, so I can't have saw marks in hard corners. I clean them up and rounded everything with files. Turns out the edge of this counter is way more convenient than the vise, so I drilled a hole in my desk for nothing. Good thing I got it cheap because I knew I was going to ruin it. So besides the gladiator sculpture that I'm using as inspiration, there are other parallels with the description Polybius gives in ancient Italian armor. But all of these finds are from at least a century earlier, and none are definitively Roman. Some are circular plates meant to be placed off-center over the heart and are roughly the size described, but these stop showing up centuries before 200 BC. There is also a squarish type associated with the Samnites that had muscles beaten into them, imitating Greek muscle cuirasses, but these are too early as well. Time issues aside, they try to fit all the chest muscles onto a plate much smaller than the chest, and it just looks silly. With all four rings and mounts made, I started attaching them to the breastplate. I didn't measure to place them perfectly symmetrically. Hardly any artifacts I've seen look to be that perfect, and obvious inconsistencies are normal, especially with hull placement. I don't know what their problem was back in the day, but Roman craftsmen seem to have punched holes in things all willy-nilly like some kind of barbarians. It's madness. I used copper wire as rivets, making sure to cut from all directions. If you cut it in one go, it forms an edge rather than a point, and doesn't hammer out into a head as nicely. Sorry downstairs, neighbors.
This is the disc that will go on the back where the straps cross. To give it a convex shape, I hammered it into a pipe coupling. That's a piece of an interchangeable tool stand I'm building. It will get its own video later. It had to match the texture of the front plate, so I spent a few extra minutes bothering my downstairs neighbors. Originally, I was going to put four more rings on the back disc, but that was before I found out how long they took. Soldering some offcuts on for the straps to pass through was way easier. A couple more scraps finished off the permanent end of the straps. So here's the finished armor. It's not complicated and it's not much, but I suppose it would be better than nothing. You gotta remember that the shield would cover most of the body and the full kit would include a helmet and at least one greave to protect the left shin. One thing I noticed worrying about this is it can be kind of tight against my chest. I can imagine that noticeable pressure providing a small sense of security in the tense moments leading up to a battle. Just like a little reminder that something's there for protection. It's probably the same sort of effect that a weighted blanket is meant to have. I was too lazy to put it all on again for the video, so here's a photo with all of my equipment so far from this past Halloween. It definitely looks more impressive as part of the costume than on its own, and despite the extra trouble, I'm glad I used the proper bronze. Next video or two will probably be the scabbard, so subscribe if you want to see that or whatever else I make.